Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Wiley Drake Show. This show is being produced and presented to you today by the Congressional Prayer Conference of Washington, D.C.'s television and radio network and crusaderadio.com. And right now, uh, what I have to do is, since we've been changing technically, I've got to change over here just for a moment. So bear with me. And y'all all know I have trouble talking and typing at the same time. <laughs> so if I slow down a little bit, it's only because I'm trying to type a number. And uh, this is Crusade Radio number because we simulcast. We're broadcasting right now already live on the Internet. And by the way, if you're watching us right now and you miss something, and if you want to make sure what she said is what she said, you can go back to the WileyDrakeShow.com later and click on the archive, and this show will be on. And the title of the show today is The Whole Soul. <laughs> so if you want to come back and see the whole show again, all you got to do is go to the WileyDrakeShow.com, click on the archive, to the whole soul, and you will see that show again. Now, right now, though, I'm going to simul I'm going to connect us, uh, simulcast. Miss Lily used to say, "One ringy dingy, two ringy." You remember Miss Lily Tomlin? Yes. One ringy dingy, <laughs> two ringy dingies, and we're going to be connected. And now we're going to. Whoops! How come we aren't at it? see if we did. Let, let's go back here. I didn't I didn't do something right, folks. Y'all bear with me. Okay, there's Crusade Radio, but I need to uh, okay. Let me back out. I'll do it all over again. Called Telephonic Prayer. Telephonic Prayer is a telephone line that we hook up with the radio show. This is not just a TV show. Like I said, you'll not hear another TV show like this. This is a prayer meeting. Called Telephonic Prayer. Come on, Siri, wake up. You don't have any voice. Uh, come on, Siri. Call telephonic prayer. Calling telephonic prayer. There you go. And this is our telephonic prayer, and they're going to tell me to put in a code number. Welcome. This service is provided by Free Conference Call. And you too can call on this, folks. Three nine nine four three zero pound. You entered three nine nine. There is one other participant in this conference. All right. Yourself. This is self. I have another line open. The reason we do is because we have music if we're on by ourselves, okay. and so I had to put that line on to, to stop that. Now, what we're going to do now is we're going to get ready to simulcast. We're going to add a call, and we're going to do. We're going to add Crusade Radio to our call. Let's ring into Crusade Radio. And the second ring, it should answer. There it goes. And now I've got to hit Merge Calls. That's what I didn't do a while ago. Okay. And now we're going to Merge Calls. And now we're on Telephonic Prayer from Washington, D.C. and Crusade Radio. Crusade Radio, good morning. God bless you. Remember, the theme for this program has been and will always be Micah 6, 8 and Matthew 23, 23. Both of those verses say, do justice, love mercy, and walk with God. And that's exactly the theme for this program. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this program is live simulcasting from Washington, D.C. and Visalia, California, which is just north of here at Crusade Radio, but this is a prayer meeting. We don't mess around. We pray. This is a prayer meeting. And as an ambassador for Christ mm -hmm. and an ambassador for the kingdom of God, I declare this show to be an open prayer meeting. And if you want to share a prayer request or a praise report with us, call 712-432-1690. Put in your access code 399 Four three zero pound. Call that number, 712-432-1690. Put in your access code, 399-430-POUND, and you will join us 
on the speakerphone, on the air, right here. And we would encourage you to do that. We are live on our prayer line, Telephonic Prayer. We're live with Crusade Radio. And we're live from the beautiful Buena Park, California. In Spanish, Buena means good. And, of course, everybody knows what a park is. Well, we're in the good park. We're right up the street from Knott's Berry Farm. We're only five miles away from the happiest place on earth, according to Walt Disney, and that's Disneyland. We're 19 miles from Hollywood, which is where my daughter and my granddaughters uh, are in the business. They don't make much money, but they're in the business. <laughs> but, uh, in fact, my daughter now is not really in the business right now, my granddaughter. She is in the New York School of Theater. And uh, she's a student there, but uh, she could not afford that kind of school. It's thousands upon thousands of dollars. But because she was a pretty good little actress and made some pretty good money, she is a student at New York University, yeah. even though her daddy is a poor Baptist preacher <laughs> in Santa Monica. And people want to know, how in the world can you afford to have your kid in that school? He said, I can't. <laughs> but she got enough uh, benefits. Uh, from making money in the movies and doing movies and so forth, walk-ons and so forth. And anyway, uh, pray for her. Her name is Kendra. And ladies and gentlemen, if you have a prayer request, call it right now. If you call me on my cell phone, 714-865-8132, I will answer it. I just got off the phone before we talked. I got off the phone with a press officer in Arkansas in my home state. And by the way, I'm here to tell you, folks, I consider endorsing candidates. Let me tell you how I considered endorsing a candidate. When Mike Huckabee ran for president, mm -hmm. I endorsed him from the pulpit of my church. Wow. Personally endorsed him from the pulpit of my church. A fellow by the name of Barry Lynn, an ungodly man who has an organization that don't like preachers to be involved in politics, mm -hmm. called the IRS and reported me and said, I want you to go against him. And so they, the IRS brought a case against me and uh, sent me a pack of paperwork that thick and charged me with everything in the world because I was violating IRS code. And I told them, take their code and pack it because I didn't care. Well, later they dropped the case because they knew that they couldn't win. So... I endorsed, and I made it very clear from the pulpit and in the letter and on this program, I said I personally endorse him. I knew what I was doing. I'm not a lawyer, not even a lawyer wannabe. But I said I personally endorse him. Not the church, not the pulpit, but I personally. Mm -hmm. And therefore the IRS had to back off and leave me the heck alone. Now. I am considering right now endorsing another Arkansas, I hope to be a friend. I've been praying now for several years for Mark Pryor. Okay. He is the senator, one of the senators from Arkansas. I pray for him every day. Mark Pryor, you know this. I've told you this. We pray every morning for every senator. We call out all 50 states. And we call out the first and last name. And when they get to Arkansas, I chime in and say, Mark Pryor and John Boozman. <laughs> and I've been praying for Mark Pryor for years and will continue to pray for him. But, folks, he has gone off the deep end. He is an Obama disciple, and I can't stand that. Now, I'm going against you, Mark Pryor. You already know that. But I am going to go against you in a very positive way. I heard about a man who is a godly man, I believe. And his name is Cotton. Good old Arkansas Cotton. <laughs> Tom Cotton. I communicated today with his press office, and I told them, if you guys want me to help you, here's what I do for politicians. Anybody that's running, I'll tell anybody out there, I don't care who you are, you may be an Obama disciple, but if you want to come on this program, I ask you three questions when you come on my program. Number one, who are you? Number two, where are you from? And if you're a politician, if I were in your district or your state, why should I vote for you? And those are the only questions I ask you. 
Now, if you talk about you're pro-sodomy or you're pro-Obama or you're pro-this or pro- I'll argue with you all day long, but I will not criticize you. I'll let you say anything you want to say. So politicians, you got a free radio station here and a free television station. You can use it anytime you want to if you're not afraid to come on the Wiley Drake Show. I will not criticize you. I will not attack you. But I will tell you what the Bible says about what you believe. Now, one of the other things that we do on this program, and this lady is probably wondering, why is he talking about all this? I'm supposed to be on the air. <laughs> but one of the other things we do is, if you write a book or a paper or you have a product and it's Bible-based, Bible-based, we will promote it on this show absolutely free. Don't cost you a dime. There is a minimal cost if you write a book or paper, and that is I get a free book. <laughs> I get a free book. I ain't buying nobody's book, okay? Not because I'm broke, because I'm not. I got a couple of bucks. But I figure if I'm going to promote it, good, bad, or indifferent, I want a free book out of the deal. And, you know, and so I didn't tell her that, but she gave me one anyway. <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, this book is entitled The Whole Soul, Rescripting Your Life for Personal Transformation. And, man, we could talk all day about transformation. You know what the word transformation is in Greek? It is metamorphosis. Metamorphosis is what I did when my girl... Now, remember, folks, I'm an old man. My oldest daughter is 50 years old, and my son's 35 years old, and he's the baby in the family. But when my kids were growing up, we got what I call a metamorphosis kit. <laughs> you placed an order, and they sent you a box with cellophane on it, and in that box were some caterpillars. Hmm. And it said put a, a, a vial of water in there, so they can have water, and you raise these caterpillars. Well, what happens is those ugly, and when the girls saw that, they said, oh, they were just creepy, crawly bugs, you know. But we watched them, and pretty soon, one of the girls came in one day and said, Daddy, the caterpillars are gone. I said, no, they're not. Come here. And I showed them up in the top of the box. They had gone up there and woven a cocoon and they had crawled in that cocoon and wrapped themselves up. Now they're not ugly creatures anymore. They're just a little white cocoon up in the top. Now, after a few weeks, those little cocoon things began to open. And guess what happened? There didn't come crawling out of there a uh, icky, ooey. The girl said, oh, my goodness, because a beautiful butterfly. A beautiful butterfly came out of that cocoon that used to be a creepy, crawly, ugly bug. And they became a beautiful butterfly. And they opened those beautiful wings. And then, of course, we had to cut the cellophane so they could fly away mm -hmm. into God's kingdom. What happens there is an ugly, ooh, bug became a beautiful butterfly. Scientists call that the process of metamorphosis. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and perfect and acceptable will of God. All of us as people are ooey, gooey, ugly worms. Mm -hmm. And we can become a beautiful butterfly Absolutely. by transformation. Ladies and gentlemen, I have Dr. Gail Rogers on with me. Doc, God bless you and welcome to the Wiley Drake Show. Tell us a little bit about you first and then let's talk about your book. Where are you from? Who are you? Those are my typical Wiley questions. Who are you? Where are you from? And why are you on my show? <laughs> All right. Well, I'm Dr. Gail Rogers. I was born and raised in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Moved to California. Was here for 30 years. Moved to Georgia for about 20 years, and I'm back now in California. One of my favorite people is in Georgia. Is that right? She's a sister in the Lord, and I just love her to death. And uh, people are going to say, oh, well, you're just dropping names. Uh, but uh, 
Her name is Dr. Alveda King. Oh, I love Alveda Dr. King. Dr. Alveda yes. King is, of course, the niece of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and a lovely, lovely lady, and we work together quite often. She works for a, a even though I tease her about this, but I say, you're a Baptist. You know, you're not a Catholic, but she works for priests for life with Dr. Frank Prevone mm -hmm. and does a great work there. And she also, in fact, the matter is, I tell people she's my co-host because she's been on this show almost as much as I have. Right? <laughs> she comes on here all the time. In fact, Dr. King, call me. <laughs> if you're listening, call us and let's talk. Talk to Dr. Gail Rogers. But anyway, uh, go ahead now. I interrupted you. You, you lived in Georgia for a while now. T take it from there. All right. I was just with Dr. Alveda King uh, at a pastor's meeting in Washington, D.C., in amen. June, um, oh, amen. talking about literally shifting our country. Um, my book, The Whole Soul, first of all, let me just say that I am a mental health professional. Mental health professional. I have been working with clients. On my audience is going to be glad because a lot of my audience think, wow, they need some mental <laughs> health. Now you've got a doctor on it. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> My, my clientele, uh, and the reason why I wrote The Whole Soul is because too many people were coming to me with issues. Uh, they were very much involved in church. They were very much involved in the Lord, but yet I wasn't seeing a mindset change. Mm -hmm. And so I began to ask the Lord to talk to me about the scripture that you just quoted mm -hmm. about be ye transformed. So I, I started asking people, um, Wiley, how do you become transformed in your mind? And I got the same answer all the time. And it was, stay in the presence of God, Amen. read your Bible, and Amen. pray. A Amen. Well, Amen. back in 98, I had written a book uh, called How to Hear God's Voice. Mm. Amen. So I was in the presence of God, and, and I still had negative thoughts. So I started asking God, Teach me how to change our thoughts. Amen. Amen. Not only do I need to change mine, but I need to be able to help my clients Amen. change their Praise thoughts. Praise the Lord. A lot of clients with depression, uh, with anxiety, with post-traumatic stress disorder, all of those things, particularly my, my biggest clientele is women who've been sexually abused mm, mm. Uh, and women who have been battered for yeah, years and yeah, years and yeah. years. Somehow, the body of Christ, uh, our, our, our pastors were teaching, that's in the past, just get over it. Mm. And, and they weren't getting over yeah. it. <laughs> so, so seven years ago, I began to write about uh, how to change your thoughts mm. from mm. a Amen. practical perspective. Amen. Amen. I thought I, I had a handle and an understanding about how to change those thoughts. I mean, for 30 years, I'd been reading positive thinking books. This is mm -hmm. what you need to do. Mm -hmm. However, uh, what I realized is that though I had somewhat of an understanding, I didn't have a revelation. Amen. Amen. And so God began to uh, take me on a journey of researching the mind, researching the brain, researching all that has to do with our thoughts, our heart, how to change our heart. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. one of the scriptures that you'll see in there is a scripture uh, that says uh, that we are to, that, that out of the mouth, uh, out of the heart, the mouth speaks. Yes, um, yes, yes. The yes. other one is that as a man thinketh in mm, his heart, so, so is, is he. It. Absolutely. So I understand the heart and mind being interchangeable. And, and looking at continuously throughout the scripture of what, what the Bible talked about in terms of getting our hearts right. Mm -hmm. So as I was writing this book step by step, the Lord showed me not only how to transform my mind, but how to begin to uh, usher other people. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I am a pioneer of stirring up gifts mm, in amen. people amen. because what I found is that they, they lay dormant in us. So uh, there's a chapter in there on shifting the subconscious mind. I begin to study the subconscious mind. I didn't see the word subconscious mm. in the scripture. Mm, mm -hmm. But because I was studying it and teaching it, I began to ask the Lord, show me mm. where this is. Mm. 
God showed me uh, the inner man. Mm -hmm. yes, and yes, inner yes. man, one of the, the words for inner man is subconscious. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so he began to show me how to tap into what's buried underneath Amen. the conscious mind. And years and years and years of toxic emotions, toxic thoughts. Mm -hmm. And so that is how the book was born, is simply teaching people how to get, how to understand their identity, their true identity. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, you know my teaching on this show, and we've talked about transformation many, many times. And uh, uh, I believe in that, absolutely believe in that. And I believe, not just because I believe it, but or you write about it, or other great writers, but I believe it because that's what the Bible says. Mm -hmm. And that's why, before we invite you or anybody else to come on here, uh, I and Bob, and Bob is my buddy, and Bob used to be my minister of music here. He's back in Georgia now. In fact, he's in Woodstock, Georgia. Yes. And he's in the scheduler. But Bob knows, and, and he knows me well enough to know, that uh, if it ain't Bible-based, I don't care how good it is, we don't mess with it. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a whole lot of good psychological books out there, but I ain't got time to play those games. Mm -hmm. If they're not Bible-based, if they start trying to throw the Bible out rather than bring the Bible in, then I ain't got time to fool with them. Mm -hmm. But when I looked at this book and when I saw the basis of this book, and Bob did too, saw the basis that it, yes, is about the whole soul. It's about transformation. It's about communication. But it's about being birthed from the Word of God. And since it is birthed from the Word of God, then that's when we said we want you to be on the program. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the book is entitled The Whole Soul. And I want to give you an incentive. I'm not selling books for her, uh, but I want to give you an incentive. You, she said, <laughs> I can if I want to. I want to give you an incentive to get this book. If you buy this book, you call my scheduler, Bob Bosworth, and you tell Bob, I want to be on the Wiley Drake Show. I want to give a book report on the whole soul. Amen. Now, let me tell you something. If you call Bob, Bob's a great cranky old man like me. If you call Bob and say, I want to come on the show and talk about that book, The Whole Soul, first question he's going to ask you very politely is, do you have the book? And if you say, no, but I've heard about it, he's going to say, well, when you get the book, call me back. Read the book, call me back. Don't just talk about it. Right. Read it. And if you don't like it, that's okay. But if you do like it, come on. But anyway, get the whole soul. Now, the uh, author is Dr. Gail Rogers, Ph.D. And uh, where do they get the book? Amazon.com or DrGail.com. Okay, Dr. Gail, G A Y L E, dot com or Amazon dot com. And Doctor is D O C T O R. D O C T O R. All right, all right. Get the book, read it, call my scheduler, Bob Bosworth. His phone number is 714 699 8657. Write a little faster 714 699 8657. Call Bob and say, Bob, I want to come on the Wiley Drake Show, and we'll give you up to 15 minutes on the Wiley Drake Show to talk about your experience with this book. Now, I always warn authors about that because I say if they call up and they say, I don't like it, it's a bad book, we'll still let them talk. <laughs> <laughs> In all the years I've done this, though, I've never had that happen. <laughs> but if it happens... We let them talk. We do not screen our calls. In fact, if you want to prove that, all you got to do is call me right now. If you call 714-865-8132, that phone will ring. Interesting story. I had a man, I had a young lady on here that's going on a mission trip, and uh, I told her, I said, if you'll come on, uh, we'll let you be on the program on my show and talk about your mission trip. She's going to go on a mission trip. And so she said, okay. And she said, can I bring my dad with me? And I know her dad. And I said, yeah, bring him on down. Well, they're sitting here. She was sitting right here. He was sitting down there at the end of the table. And I talked about this, that you could call me at any time. So he's sitting there at the end of the table. My phone rang. <laughs> and I answered it. 
And he and then I could hear it. I said, "What are you calling me for?" He said, "I didn't believe you. I wanted to make sure you <laughs> would answer it." So I answered it right there on the air. I said, "Hang the phone up. We're getting feedback because you're calling right here so close." So, ladies and gentlemen, I do. I, one of my policies on here is that we do not screen our calls. Uh, over the years, I've called Rush Limbaugh. I've called uh, Hannity and Combs. I've called. You know, Glenn Beck, I've called all these radio programs, and I get so incensed because I'm nobody, but nothing left. I am a client. I'll call in and say, I want to talk. They're talking about thus and so, and I want to talk about it. And they'll say, okay, we'll put you on hold. And I get an administrative assistant or a secretary or the janitor or somebody, and they say, well, what do you want to talk about? And they want to screen me before they let me get on the program. And I said, if I ever get my own program, I'm not going to screen the call. So we do not screen the calls. Anybody want to call, call right now, 714-865-8132. I will not screen it. Now, if you want to come on and stay on the line for a while, call our conference call number. That will also ring on that phone, and that's 712-432-1690, access code 399-430-POUND. But... You call Bob, Bob Bosworth is his name, 714-699-8657, uh, and tell him you've got the book and you want to talk about it, and he'll book you on the Wiley Drake Show somewhere in the near future. And by the way, we do two shows every day. We're on our morning show now. It's the noon show in D.C., but we do our morning show uh, for one hour, and then tonight at 5 o'clock, we do another show, another one hour. So there's plenty of time for you to come on and tell us what you found in this book. I want to tell you something I found in the book. Uh, way, I, when I was looking at the chapter, and I haven't read the book yet. So Bob, don't book me. I haven't read the book. <laughs> <laughs> but I will read the book, and I will talk about it later. But over here, where, where am I finding the, the, the chapter listings? I, I thought I saw it in there. Where, where, where? should be. Okay, you show me where that's at. Good morning, caller. Welcome to the Wiley Drake Show. You're live on the air. Go ahead. You can identify yourself. Morning, Wiley. Richard Mass. Richard Mass with Liberty Council. Richard Mass with Liberty Council. Thank you so much. I have in my studio right now a guest, Gail Rogers, talking about her book, The Whole Soul. But we're going to give her and me a little break because you know and I know we work very closely with Matt Staver and Anita Staver, godly, godly man and woman, and I consider them my friends. And brother, I don't believe we've met before, we may have, but tell us what's on your heart and on your mind, uh, because Liberty Council is indeed on our hearts today. Well, Wiley, we are uh, excited to be here. This is a critical time for America with the elections coming up here. Amen. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we've already been talking about this uh, with Matt and Anita and other folks from Liberty. And by the way, for those of you who know a little bit about my background, you'll know I had some very important mentors in my life. One of them was Dr. Jerry Falwell. One of them was, uh, you know, uh, Dr. Adrian Rogers and uh, Dr. J. Vernon McGee and others. And uh, one of the great uh, benefits of, uh, of my life have been uh, meeting Dr. Jerry Falwell. And the fact of the matter is, uh, some of the Southern Baptists give, uh, give me a little bit of credit for uh, converting Dr. Jerry Falwell to become a Southern Baptist. But uh, I don't know if I need to take credit for that or not. But at any rate, I have a great deal of appreciation for Dr. Falwell. And I'm looking forward to being in heaven with him forever. Uh, but uh, I did enjoy our time here on earth. And during that time on earth, he brought me in the office one day and said, I want you to meet a young man. And he introduced me to Matt Staver. And over the years, I've gotten to know Matt and Anita very well. And we've traveled together. We've worked together. And uh, this process that's going on right now that they're doing is called Pray and Vote. 
And folks, I don't mind telling you, I've been saying that for years. We've got to pray, and then we've got to put feet to our prayers. Praying I mean, and by the way, one of the things that we, we do what I call the Jerry Falwell program in our church. Once a month, I walk in the pulpit and I say to our audience, if you're registered to vote, please rise to your feet. And those people stand up. And I'll say, now, if, you're, if you remain seated, two things I want to say to you. Number one, shame on you that you're not registered to vote. And... My deacons will bring you a voter registration card right now. Now, Dr. Falwell taught me that, and we still do that today. But tell us about what's going on currently uh, uh, in uh, liberty in reference to pray and vote. Amen. We have our website, LC, lc.org, and we've got resources, and we can provide uh, attorneys are available to discuss if, they're, if they have questions about legalities. So, and, and you uh, guys course. you guys have a DVD, uh, a DVD or CD, too, that's, that's so very, very effective. I've passed that on to many, many pastors, and I would encourage you, ladies and gentlemen, if you have any doubt, about whether you as a pastor should be involved, you need to get in touch with Liberty Council, I guarantee you. Well, and pastors are, you know, if, if you look back at the founding of America, the American Revolution, the British attributed much of the success of the revolution to the pulpit. Amen. The, as they termed it, the, the black-robed regiment, <laughs> in uh, reference to the garment that preachers wore. Yeah. I was just going to say that. I know a guy that thinks he's king. Absolutely right, my brother. And ladies and gentlemen, I would encourage you. Uh, brother, I want you once again, give us your name and then give us the websites where people can go to find more information. Would you please? Sure. My name is Richard Mast. I'm SP, just like on a ship. Okay. The website is www.lc.org. LC stands for Liberty Council. And we have resources for pastors and for concerned citizens. And um, we're happy to help when there's questions that arise. Amen. And folks, uh, these folks will do a great job for you. And by the way, uh, I believe that uh, uh, God has used Dr. Jerry Falwell and Liberty Council and all the folks since right on down now to Richard Mast uh, to help those of us that need to be more salt and light and need to be more active in the kingdom's work. And I would encourage you, go to their website, uh, pray for them and support them and, and help them as they help me as a pastor 
and other pastors all over our nation uh, to get involved. And even when we get involved, uh, they try to stop us. You know, I, I've, I've been to jail now uh, more than two dozen times uh, as a result of trying to do the will of God. And uh, uh, praise God for Matt Staver and other people like Liberty Council. Uh, they've gotten me out of jail pretty quick most of the time. <laughs> but uh, the, bot the bottom line is, folks, uh, we, we need to stand up. It's time to stand. It's time to pray and to vote. Brother, thank you so much for being on with us today, and God bless you. Thank you, people, for uh, organizing this. And any time, brother, we welcome you back to the show, all right? Well, thank you for having us, and uh, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much, and God bless you. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. Uh, I have uh, uh, the reputation, uh, I, in fact, the matter is I had a, I had a situation where Dr. Falwell had to call me up and apologize. Is that right? He did. He called me up and said, Wiley, I want you to know I didn't ask your permission. I had a sign up here at the church at one time that said, We may not be politically correct, but we're biblically correct. <laughs> and somebody told me later, they said, Hey, I was down at uh, Lynchburg going into Thomas Road Baptist Church, and Dr. Falwell had that sign up on the road going in there. We're not biblically, we're not politically correct, but we're biblically correct. And uh, Dr. Falwell said somebody told him that he had signed up and he said, you, you needed to ask Wiley. <laughs> but I said, no, Doc, that ain't my sign. That's God's sign. That's God's sign. But anyway, Liberty Council, great, great organization. And uh, But by the way, back now to Dr. Gale's book, uh, down toward the end of the book, there's two things I like about the book, mostly and mainly, that it is Bible-based. That's the most important thing. But down toward the end, it also deals with what I believe is part of what God's given me as a talent, and that is communications. Mm -hmm. uh, I am a communicator, and I make no apologies for bragging about that. <laughs> I am a communicator because back in 1972, when I graduated just across the way over here from the University of Southern California, I got my degree, my bachelor's degree, in communication. And my bachelor's degree in communication is signed by the great communicator, Ronald Reagan. Wow. He was the chancellor of the school system of California because he was a governor in 1972. And so when I graduated, he signed my diploma. Later, they changed the university from college and so forth, and they wanted to know if I wanted a new diploma. And that I, for 50 bucks, they would give me a new diploma. And I said, I'd love to have a different diploma under the University of Southern California now, rather than Cal State Long Beach, uh, but only if we can get Ronald Reagan's signature on it. And they said, well, we can't do that. And I said, then I'll keep my old diploma. <laughs> but communications is very important. And ladies and gentlemen, in the last part, of, the latter part of this book, you will see two or three chapters there that deal. Tell us a little bit about how you deal with communications there. Well, I just believe, uh, Wiley, that we have to speak with clarity. Amen. That we have to make sure when we are talking with someone, when we're building relationships, Amen. Uh, that we make sure that we each understand one another. So often, we, 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 this is what we have, is that we have a person that loves to talk, Mm -hmm. uh, talks all the time and is not a good listener. How come she's looking at me when she says that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. And, and so, so, so what happens is there's always a miscommunication. Absolutely. And I begin to look over the years of the relationships that I had been in where either I didn't understand the person or mm -hmm. they didn't understand mm -hmm. me. Now, I, like yourself, I believe that I am an excellent communicator because I'm one of those people that says to the person that's talking, let me make sure I understand what you said. Amen. Did Amen. you say? Amen. And when we've got an understanding of what's being conveyed, then the listener is able to convey back what they believe they understood. Yeah. Relationships oftentimes, particularly in the area of offense, is that relationships oftentimes break off mm -hmm. because Amen. one person has said something to offend the other person, 
it's not biblical. We spend a lifetime being offended and unforgiving and yeah, bitter and amen. resentful and not amen. speaking to other people. But it's important that we communicate on a level of where whether we're communicating to a puppy <laughs> Amen. or we're communicating to the president. Amen. Amen. We have to be able to convey exactly what it is that we want to say so the, the listener can get it and be able to make an intelligent decision Amen. based on what was communicated. And I like that communications analogy there of puppy and president, too. <laughs> I won't go there. I won't go there. Uh, but the reason I brought that up was not to be silly. But uh, in talking about what you've said, the perception communication is one of her chapters, and that is very, very important, as she just pointed out. And the other thing she just pointed out, this chapter 12, communication breakdown and blocking. I shared earlier this morning, I had the privilege to communicate with my dear wife 48 years, one month, and 14 days before she went to heaven. But I can tell you this, all the years that we were married, we had a good marriage and a godly marriage as best we knew how. But the times that my wife and I would butt heads and say, wait a minute, we need to sit down, we need to get away, baby, and we need to talk, it was always over, well, what did she say or what did I say? Mm -hmm. It was a communication breakdown. Absolutely. And, and then, then we'd sit down and she'd say, well, baby, I know I said so-and-so, but that's not really what I meant. Or I'd say, honey, I, I didn't mean it that way. And then we'd straighten out the communication. And then we'd get back in the bed together. <laughs> because we would get over that communication breakdown. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I was intrigued by that chapter 12, communication breakdowns and blockages. And I tell you what, in dealing with uh, being a talk show host, having a certain amount of notoriety around the country, uh, I find quite often that uh, communication breakdowns is why some people don't like me, mm -hmm. you know? And, and when we can communicate eyeball to eyeball, then they say, well, wait a minute, okay. I, in fact, the matter is, I'll give you one example of that. A UPI reporter a number of years ago was talking with another reporter about me, and the guy said, uh, you don't, you're not a very good writer. You, in fact, you didn't even spell Wiley's name right. <laughs> My name is W-I-L-E-Y. And the reporter looked at him and said, yes, I did. He said, if you read that again, you read a little closer, you'll see, you'll see that I wasn't talking about his name. I was saying, this man is Wiley, W-I-L-Y. <laughs> he is Wiley, and that's what I meant to say about him. He is a Wiley character. <laughs> Just so happens his name is Wiley. Mm -hmm. But see, again, there's where the communications break down. And that's why I think this, ladies and gentlemen, I recommend this book. And like I said, to give you an incentive to get it, go to Amazon.com or DrGale.com and get the book and then call Bob. Call Bob Bosworth and say, Bob, I got the book and I want to talk about it. And Bob will book you on the air. All you got to do is call him, 714-699-8657. And some of you are going to say, well, that's a 714 number. Well, that is a 714 number. Bob used to live here, and he kept the same number when he moved to Georgia. He lives in Woodstock now, but his area code is still Orange County. So communications is very important. I'm looking forward to reading the whole book, but I'm also uh, very interested in reading about communications and transformation. The title of the book is The Whole Soul. Paul the Apostle said, I want to pray for you wholly, mm -hmm. in a whole, body, soul, and spirit. But the whole soul, re-scripting. Folks, if we ever needed to re-scripting, yes. we need it today. And also, if we ever needed personal transformation, we need it today. Dr. Gale, what else would you tell us we'll find in the book? Well, you'll find something uh, in there about the DNA power gene. Mm. And what that means is as I begin to understand my identity in Christ and understanding being seated in heavenly places. Mm -hmm. You know, throughout uh, the New Testament, uh, Jesus tells us 
I give you power. Amen. Amen. And when we understand the power uh, of what has been released or what was created in us from the very beginning, when we begin to understand the power and how uh, we have a kingdom DNA. Amen. Amen. So, you know, there's a kingdom culture, and then there's just a culture, period. Mm -hmm. People mm -hmm. saying, I'm a Christian. Yeah. People saying, yeah. will I go to such and such a church or whatever. Yeah. But yeah. there is a kingdom culture of where we do it the way Jesus taught us to how Amen. To do it. Amen. Amen. You're absolutely right. And you know, in, that, uh, in the original language there, when it talks about that word power, mm -hmm. That's a Greek word called dunamis. dunamis that's right. And that dunamis is where we get our English word dynamite. That's right. A number of years ago, I worked for a company, and one of the things that they did was they, uh, they blew things up. <laughs> and it was uh, uh, to demolish, when they cut a path through a mountain, they would plant charges, and they would literally carve out an opening through a mountain with dynamite. Mm -hmm. Because they knew where to plant it and how to plant it and shoot it. And they did what they call shooting. And they would blow it up and then they'd haul the rubble away. But that was controlled power. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what I think this book's going to help you do, folks. You're going to find out, as she's already said, you've got power. But it must be a power under control. It must yes. be controlled power. Because yes. dynamite can make a big mess of things. Absolutely. You know? And, uh, in fact, <laughs> I remember about the dynamite, I remember a story uh, about a guy who decided he was going to try to catch this old farmer because this old farmer would go out fishing, and rather than take the time to fish, he would go out in the lake and, and, and throw a stick of dynamite in the water <laughs> and blow up the water. And the fish, of course, would float to the surface, and he'd just gather the fish. Mm -hmm. Well, one time he was going to catch this guy doing that because that was illegal. So he got in the boat with the old farmer. And they went out there, and the, and the, and the old boy from the IRS or from the uh, rev, uh, the government said, "What are you going to do?" He said, "Well, we're going fishing." And he said, "Well, you can't. You, how are you going to fish?" And he said, "Well, I'm going to use this dynamite." He said, "That's illegal. You can't do that." Mm -hmm. And he said, "Well, uh, that may be true, but he 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 lit the dynamite and handed it to the <laughs> revenue officer, and he said, "You're gonna you're gonna talk, or you're gonna <laughs> fish." <laughs> And obviously he got rid of the dynamite. Right. So he said, you're going to talk or you're going to fish. <laughs> so, uh, but, but we do know that God gives us that dynamite uh, to, to deal with life yes. in all of its problems. And, but it's got to be controlled. It's got to be controlled. And I believe that being seated in heavenly places, Amen. I believe that we have the power to look down on the mm -hmm. circumstances. Amen. Too many times we allow ourselves to get bogged down by the circumstances. We then become depressed, we become stressful, we get in fear, and we can't move forward in what God has given us to do. I want, and this is what I, I, I said to the Lord several years ago. I said, God, if I'm not doing purpose and destiny mm. on this earth, I don't need to be here. That's right. I Amen. don't need to be Amen. taking up airspace. <laughs> I need Amen. to be promoting the kingdom of Amen. God and teaching people how to walk holy, how yes. to be saved for real. Mm. Okay. Teaching them Amen. the word of salvation. Amen. Teaching them soteria. Amen. That we have freedom from destruction. We Amen. have safety. We have prosperity. We have peace. And so the whole soul is about walking in mm -hmm. our God-given wholeness Amen. in everything that we do. Amen. And ladies and gentlemen, this book, I believe, and I'm not just saying it because i got a pretty woman sitting here by me and I want to influence her. But I believe this book will help you get a better understanding of the book that is the Word of God. And that, after all, is what books are about. Yes. I wrote a book called The Body, Soul, and Spirit, the, the Study of the Triune Nature of Man. Now, that book is not that great necessarily, except that it points you to the Word of God. And this book is a good book, not just because a pretty lady wrote it and did a good job, but because it points you to the real book. It points you to the real power, and it points you to help re-script, as it says, your life for personal transformation. A number of years ago, I used to have a lady that would walk out of the church on Sunday mornings, and she'd always say, good morning, Pastor. She had to shake hands with me, you know, which was great. She'd shake hands and say, good morning, Pastor. And I made the mistake one day of saying, well, Sister so-and-so, 
how are you doing? She said, well, <laughs> under the circumstances. And so she got in the habit, every time she would come out, she would say, aren't you going to ask me how, how I'm doing? I'd say, yeah, how you doing, sister? Well, under the circumstances, she'd say, I'm doing all right. And so finally one day I said, sister, she said, under the circumstances. I said, what are you doing under there? You ought not be under those That's circumstances. Right. That's, That's right. what the whole soul will help you do. Get out from under those circumstances. And as she pointed out, let's be a transformational use yes. for God's kingdom here on earth. Otherwise, Lord, take us on home. That's right. Get us out of here because we're just wasting air and space. That's right. But I'm not going to waste air and space. I'm going to help people. I'm going to tell them how I've been transformed. And I'm going to tell them how they can be transformed. And I'm going to tell them I've rescripted my. In fact, I rescript my life all the time, mm -hmm. and I'm going to keep doing that. That's why I want to read this book. 